Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. We're in the book of 1 Samuel. We come today to 1 Samuel chapter 20, and we resume our verse by verse study in verse 5. 1 Samuel 20, verse 5. Get your Bible if you can. While you're doing that, I'll remind you that the Scripture Verse by Verse website is found at thebibleversebyverse.com. There at thebibleversebyverse.com, you can study four complete series going through all of the Bible that has taken me over 35 years to teach here on Scripture Verse by Verse. It's all archived for you. It's all stored. You choose the series, the book of the Bible, the section, the chapter. Click and listen however you want to do it. Study at your pace, at your convenience at thebibleversebyverse.com. Father, Sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, we'll, we'll resume in chapter 20, verse 5. I want to begin reading in verse 1. And David fled from Naoth in Ramah, and came and said before Jonathan, What have I done? What is mine iniquity, and what is my sin? Before thy father that he seeketh my life. So David is running away from King Saul who's trying to kill him. And the only thing that David did was nothing. Nothing wrong, everything right. Saul was jealous of his popularity. Jonathan is David's best friend. Jonathan is King Saul's son. And he, Jonathan, said unto him, God forbid that thou, thou shalt not die. Behold, my father will do nothing, either great or small, but that he will show it to me. And why should my father hide this thing from me? It is not so. And David swore, moreover, and said, Thy father certainly knoweth that I have found grace in thine eyes. And he saith, Let not Jonathan know this, lest he be grieved. But truly, as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, there is but a step between me and death. Then said Jonathan unto David, Whatsoever thy soul desireth, I will even do, do it for thee. And David said unto Jonathan, Behold, tomorrow is the new moon, and I should not fail to sit with the king at the, at the table. But let me go, that I may hide myself in the field unto the third day at evening. If thy father at all miss me, then say, David earnestly asked leave of me that he might go, that he might run to Bethlehem, his city, for there is a yearly sacrifice there for all the family. If he say thus, it is well, thy servant shall have peace, but if he be very angry, then be sure that evil is determined by him. So, if Saul isn't after David, then he's not going to care if David is missing from the dinner table. But if Saul's desire is to trap and to kill David, then he's going to be angry because the opportunity to do that won't be there. Verse 8, Therefore, Thou shalt deal kindly with thy servant, for thou hast brought thy servant into a covenant of the Lord with thee. Notwithstanding, if there be in me iniquity, slay me thyself, for why shouldest thou bring me to thy father? David is just fed up with the way things are here. It's been going on too long. And he's saying if he's innocent like he believes, then Jonathan needs to support him all the way because they have a covenant, an agreement to have each other's back. On the other hand, if Jonathan thinks that his father's hatred toward David is justified, then Jonathan should kill David himself right now. Just kill me. There comes a time to choose sides and go all out for the side that you choose. Nine. And Jonathan said, Far be it from thee, 
For if I knew certainly that evil were determined by my Father to come upon thee, then would not I tell it thee? Then said David to Jonathan, Who shall tell me? Or what if thy father answer thee roughly? David wants a plan. David wants to know how he's going to know if he was right about Saul wanting to kill him. He already knows that Saul wanted to kill him, but he's doing this to get rid of any doubts that Jonathan may have. But David is saying, who's going to have the guts needed to go out and tell me that the king is out to kill me? In other words, who's willing to go against the king on my behalf, the one that he's trying to kill? Verse 11, And Jonathan said unto David, Come. And let us go out into the field. And they went out, both of them, into the field. Jonathan has a plan. So he takes David out into the country to show him how it's going to work. Verse 12. And Jonathan said unto David, O Lord God of Israel, when I have sounded my father about tomorrow any time or the third day and behold if there be good toward david then i and and i then send not unto thee and show it to thee the lord do so and more to jonathan let's stop right there for a second jonathan promises that he's going to talk to his father and let david know how his father feels about him and if I was David, I would say, Jonathan, your father tried to pin me to the wall with a javelin. I'd say, if I was David, I'd say, I don't think we need to go through this process. But Jonathan did have to go through this process because he was the type of person that would believe the best about someone until it was impossible to believe it anymore. So, he continues in his oath to David, the Lord do so, and much more to Jonathan. But if it please my father to do thee evil, then I will show it to thee and send thee away, that thou mayest go in peace. And the Lord be with thee, as he hath been with my father. So Jonathan is saying, if I find out that my dad wants to kill you, David. May the Lord kill me if I don't tell you. If we have something that can help others, God expects us to use that something to do it. If we do not, then we will answer to God for being uncaring toward others. 14. And thou shalt not only, while yet I live, show me the kindness of the Lord that I die not, but also thou shalt not cut off thy kindness from my house forever. No, not when the Lord hath cut off the enemies of David, every one from the face of the earth. You know, in, in those days, when a man became king, Usually, the first order of business would be to immediately, immediately kill all their potential rivals, like the entire family of the previous king. Jonathan is going to help David, even if that means going against his father. But Jonathan wants assurance that after David is on the throne, which he knows is going to happen, that he will not kill all of Saul's relatives, including Jonathan himself. 16. So Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David, saying, Let the Lord even require it at the hand of David's enemies. So David swears to Jonathan that if he ever breaks his promise, he wants a curse to fall on himself and his family. 
David would never hurt anyone from Jonathan's family. I don't think he needed an oath. If people care about someone, they'll also care about those who they care about. 17. And Jonathan caused David to swear again, because he loved him, for he loved him as he loved his own soul. So Jonathan made David swear again. Not because he had to, but because he cared about Jonathan. And that's why David did it. He did it not because he had to. His word was good. Not to confirm his oath. Because the first time he said it wasn't good enough. No, but he did it because Jonathan would appreciate it. You don't need a law that says thou shalt not if you care about people. If you care about people, that's a guarantee that you won't hurt the other person. David did this to make his friend feel comfortable. Same reason Jonathan is making David feel comfortable by going through this whole process, even though Jonathan doesn't believe there's a chance in this world that his father truly wants to kill David. He's going through this process for David's sake. Well, let's look at 18. Then Jonathan said to David, Tomorrow is the new moon, and thou shalt be missed, because thy seat will be empty. When David isn't at dinner, the king will know it, and the king will wonder why. 19. And when thou hast stayed there, hast stayed three days, then thou shalt go, quick, go down quickly and come to the place where thou didst hide thyself when the business was in hand, and shalt remain by the stone easel. Verse 20, And I will shoot three arrows on the side of it, as though I shot at a mark. And behold, I will send a lad, saying, Go, find the arrows. If I expressly say unto the lad, Behold, the arrows are on this side of thee, take them, then come down, come thou, for there is peace to thee, and no hurt, as the Lord liveth. But if I say thus unto the young man, Behold, the arrows are beyond thee, go thy way, for the Lord hath sent thee away. And as touching the matter which thou and I have spoken of, behold, the Lord be between thee and me forever. So David did not say, forget it. God is on my side. Saul's a bad guy. I'm not hiding in some dirty old cave. I'm not doing this. I don't need to do this. God's on my side. I'm not going to take precautions against Saul and go through this sly, secret plan that you've come up with, Jonathan. No, sir. I'm on God's side. God's on my side. I'm going to stand out in public. He didn't say that. And maybe that's the way it ought to be. But that's not the way it is. Having right on your side doesn't mean that you don't have to be cautious. God tells us to be as wise as serpents and as harmless as doves. So be street smart. Use your brain. Use your head. Don't be reckless and expect God to trust you. He's given you a brain. He's given you a measure of wisdom. Use it. Be cautious. Be careful. Use the wisdom that God has given you. Don't be reckless and expect God to take care of you and to protect you. That's not trusting God. That's being presumptuous. That's testing God. We're going to stop right there. Study the whole Bible with me anytime you want to at the Scripture Verse by Verse website found at thebibleversebyverse.com. Choose, click, and listen. And if you want to be a part of this ministry, pray for me, pray for God's Word. Click the Donate button at the top of the front page at thebibleversebyverse.com and prayerfully give us the Lord may lead. See you next time on Coffee or on Scripture Verse by Verse. So long.